Hello and welcome to Semi Israel. I'm Lee Harrison from Mentor of Siemens Business. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we are helping our customers address their ISO 26262 test challenges with our test and safety ecosystem. To start, let me explain where the test and safety is originating from and why it's so exciting for all our automotive IC designers. Last year, given the amount of growth in technologies under the Tessent brand, we have refocused the technology into three key areas. Firstly, DFT. These are the core DFT products as you know them. Secondly, operations. These are the technologies associated with our DDYA and yield learning functions. And thirdly, we have safety. All of the technologies related to the growing safety needs of our automotive customers. And of course, not forgetting Tessent Connect, the platform and the infrastructure that pulls all these technologies together. With the introduction of Tessent Safety, it became clear that when developing automotive ICs, there's a very strong link between test and functional safety, as the in-system test solutions make an extremely good functional safety mechanism, and we are seeing a lot of these functional safety requirements are sitting within our customers' DFT teams. Therefore, to try and provide an end-to-end -end customer solution that encompasses both functional safety and DFT, we created the Test and Safety Ecosystem as it was clear there's a number of technologies that are essential but sit outside of the scope of our core DFT technologies. This enables us to incorporate these required technologies through both internal and external partners. In the test and safety ecosystem, as we see here, the technologies are split into three different categories. And I'll go through each of these areas and talk in more detail about the various technologies. But first, let's take a look at a finished product. Mm -hmm. This is an example block diagram of an automotive IC, showing the different technologies required to take the design from concept through to ISO 26262 certification. As you can see, there's a number of different technologies on this chip. Firstly, there's the low level functional safety mechanisms that have been inserted. These are structures such as parity, logic duplication and ECC. We then have a mixture of building test, both for memories and for logic. These also make great safety mechanisms and are included in the safety function of this device. When it comes to the manufacturing test, we can of course leverage the BIS structures that have been inserted here for functional safety, but to achieve the extremely high quality required for manufacturing test, fully compressed ATBG is also added. Finally, we have control and test access. Here you can see a number of different mechanisms. We have both the standard IEEE 1149.1 TAP controller, which can be used for manufacturing test. And we also have mission mode as part of a safety island to control, monitor and manage the in-system test. For the safety island, you will see a reference here to an ARM CPU utilized through the ARM Functional Safety Partnership Program. This is an example of how the ecosystem is far reaching and pulls technology out of the scope of just DFT. So let's get down to detail and first look at the safety verification technology that sits within the ecosystem. Here we include all of the technology required to verify our design meets its functional safety requirements and to provide a number of the metrics that are needed for the ISO 26262 certification process. These technologies include our BIST technologies, both memory BIST and logic BIST, with specific functions aimed at automotive, such as observation scan for logic BIST and non-destructive BIST for memory BIST. We also have Test and Defect Sim, which is our analog fault grading tool to help grade the quality of your in-system analog tests. And then we have the Ostempa functional safety tools. These tools that enable the automation around safety analysis, safety mechanism insertion, and safety verification. So starting with logic BIST, in simple terms, the LBIS controller is a pattern generator that can generate random patterns, which can be used to test the design's logic through scan-based structures. The scan chain outputs are then collected in a miser register and a pass-fail signature is calculated. This is a great technology for in-system test of logic because it uses similar, if not the same, scan chain structures as manufacturing test. 
So the area overhead is relatively small. Because of the efficiency of scan type, type structures, the actual test coverage of the logic is also typically very high compared to many other forms of safety mechanism. And it can reach that coverage pretty quickly. The one big downside of this technology is it's destructive. Once switched into scan shift mode, the data in the functional flops will be destroyed and the device will effectively have to be reset. With the Tessin TK Elbis hybrid solution, we combine both Tessin Test and Press with Logic Best. This creates an IP which is both flexible and configurable between the two technologies. When used to test a block of logic, it can be configured in either ATPG or Elbis mode, depending on the test scenario required. The key thing about this implementation is that a lot of the functionality is very similar, therefore it is possible to share a lot of the IP's logic between the two technologies, enabling the two technologies to be on chip with a very small overhead. This can be seen in the diagram, where the key components are shared with only the miser and some additional control logic being a significant addition for logic best. This is ideal for automotive as we are adding the in-system test mechanism with minimal additional overhead. As I previously stated, logic best as a technology has been used for many years as a solution for structural logic test. This historical map of the mentor technology shows how it has developed over the years and has become more focused on the automotive application in the more recent years. With the addition of the in-system test controller mission mode in 2016 and more recently in 2019 where we added some new technology called observation scan. Observation scan is able to massively reduce the Elbis test time which is critical for automotive in-system applications. Our current plans for 2020 are around generally making the Elbis more automotive friendly. This is a combination of various enhancements both in functionality and the technology's conformance with the ISO 26262 specification. Our aim is to make ISO certification as simple as possible for our customers using this technology. So let's talk about how our customers are using in-system BIS testing. There are three distinct use cases which you see as being important. Power on self-test or post. This is the most common implementation, often known as key on, as a lot of the scenarios now have the devices powered on full time. So this test is run when the vehicle is started and is being prepped ready for use. The challenge with post or key on is there's typically a very short interval between the key on and when the vehicle needs to be ready. So it is common to see post being very compact set of tests covering the bare minimal testing required to ensure the device is ready to use. So now let's talk about key off. This is the opposite to key on, in that when the vehicle is stopped, we have an extended time interval to run a very comprehensive set of tests. So in this scenario, it may be that you use a more advanced algorithm for memory based testing, or have a longer pattern set for your logic based tests. Finally, we have periodic test. This is the most challenging test scenario by far. Here we are looking at running the BIS test during the actual functional operation of the vehicle. The challenge being, of course, that BIS testing is destructive. So we need to take either the whole IC or parts of the IC offline to run these tests. It is this scenario that LBIS observation scan provides a huge benefit by highly reducing the overall test time. This helps the design architect by enabling the BIS test to fit into those small idle periods, which would otherwise be too short to run this test. And it's also where non-destructive memory BIS can be used to avoid losing the contents of the on-chip memory. So when we discuss logic BIS, I mentioned our observation scan technology. If we take a look at the challenges faced by the design architect, who need to run their in-system logic BIS periodically, we see that as well as any functional considerations, they are also focused on the FTTI, the Fault Time Tolerant Interval. This is the time it takes between a defect occurring in the device and the device being put into a safe state. As you can see, there are two parts to the FTTI. The DTI, which is the time it takes for the defect to be detected. In the case of LogicBIS, this is the LogicBIS test time. And then the reaction time, 
Given that a defect is detected, how long does the system take to respond to put the device into a safe state? An example could be any ADAS feature, which develops a fault, and the FTTI time is the time it takes to safely disable that particular feature and notify the driver. Let's take a look at the observation scan architecture. If you remember back when we looked at the Tessent TK LBIST architecture, this diagram looks very similar. The additions to this architecture which support observation scan technology are as follows. You can see a number of circles added to the scan structures. These are observation test points and the LBIST OST tool has a special algorithm that can help select the optimum points in the design to insert these test points. At the bottom there is also an additional scan chain which we refer to as the observation chain. This chain is made up of special observation scan cells and the chain is typically shorter than the rest of the chains in the design. The test points are then connected to the various cells in the observation chain. The key to observation scan sits within the observation scan chain. As opposed to the regular LBIS pattern which has a shift then capture type pattern format where the coverage of the logic is calculated on every capture, with the presence of the observation scan it is possible for the LBIS engine to do a capture on every single shift cycle. Due to this, it means the test coverage of the logic is actually accumulated on every clock cycle rather than every pattern. Given that the typical shift for a pattern is 100 cycles plus, this enables a huge reduction in the overall test time, and that's the reduction of the overall DTI and ultimately the FTTI. This table shows some example results from designs with observation scan implemented. In the left three columns, you can see the design reference 1 to 10, the number of test points that have been added and also the number of test patterns it takes to achieve a 90% test coverage goal with regular logic list. On the right you now have two tables which show results with observation scan and with and without control point sharing. In both instances you can see a significant reduction in the number of patterns required to achieve the 90% coverage target. Obviously the gain you see in both is dependent on the design and the number of test points added. But you can see a good range of improvement from 3x up to over 18x. We also have customers using this technology to reduce the overall area as they can still reach their DTI and coverage target with far less test points. I now want to talk about the other functional safety technology within the test and safety ecosystem. In many cases, it may be that BIST is not the appropriate safety mechanism to use, or you intend to use the BIST as a secondary safety mechanism to effectively test the tester. Our Ostemper functional safety flow provides a complete flow which enables you to carry out a detailed safety analysis of your design using safety scope. This will provide you with an estimated diagnostics coverage and provide detailed information of where your design is safe and where additional safety mechanisms need to be added. The second part of the flow, which is the design for safety, is the part of the flow focused on inserting those safety mechanisms, and this can also include the BIST technologies that we have already talked about. And finally, there's safety verification, where you are running full injection campaigns with the mechanisms that you have inserted in your design to check that you can capture these defects with the safety mechanisms producing real coverage metrics that are fed into your FMEDA ready for your ISO 26262 certification process. Next, let's talk about zero defect. Here we focus on manufacturing, and the real focus is achieving the extremely high level of defect coverage with our manufacturing tests. For automotive manufacturing tests, you will often see reference to zero DPM, defects per million, or even now zero DPB, defects per billion. This is the quality level that is targeted by all our automotive IC manufacturers. To help our customers achieve this, we have developed a range of new fault models which are designed to be more accurate than the standard fault models that have been around for years. As an introduction to defect-oriented test or cellarware, let's do a quick comparison between the familiar logic-based fault models that we're all used to seeing based on the functional topology of the cells shown here on the right, compared to the model on the left which is a fault model based on the actual physical construction of the cell. Here, through a library characterization process, we generate a target set of faults based on 
real defects that can occur within the cell. From this, ATPG is more targeted and create a higher quality pattern. There are many papers and publications with customers which show the benefits of this cellaware technology, which has been around now for about 10 years. As we extend the cellaware concept from the cell level into the design, we also start to look at other potential areas we can target which may not be covered by traditional patterns. Again, using the physical data from the design, we can look at the critical area interconnect, so bridges and opens, along with other target areas such as cell neighborhood tests. This is important as our cell internal faults are well covered with our cell aware technology, but place two cells next to each other and we need to look at the physical faults in that proximity as well. We also have support for DFM based fault models and also timing aware based fault models. All of this additional technology comes as part of the automotive grade ADBG package. Our final technology area in the test and safety ecosystem is monitor and manage. Here we look at technology around the management of the increasing number of in-system resources we are implementing on chip. This is grown significantly from say a single in-system test structure to a whole range of structures targeting different parts of the design. With this array of safety mechanisms on chip, we are seeing increasing complexity in the way these need to be managed. We also need to consider not just running these, but also the management of the results coming back. This is increasingly becoming a software oriented task as live decisions can be made on the severity of the issues that are detected on the device. And the outcome of these decisions may not always be the same every time based on a whole number of external factors. Let's quickly revisit the detail of the type of in-system scenarios that could be required within your automotive device. We have key on, we have key off, and we have periodic. As we discussed previously, these will all require different test configurations due to the different requirements and constraints of these modes. Here you can see the addition of our mission mode controller into the system. Mission mode connects directly to your IEEE 1149.1 JTAG network and takes over the delivery of the test configuration data from the ATE. Here we see a more detailed system diagram including mission mode. You can see how the mission mode controller intercepts the JTAG pins and can drive the TAC controller directly. The delivery of the test data to the mission mode controller can be done in one of two ways. A simple DMA controller with the test content stored in a ROM, when triggered, the mission mode controller can retrieve the data via the DMA from the ROM and apply it to the test network. It is possible to hold several different test scenarios within the ROM, so a selection can be made at runtime. Alternatively, we have the CPU interface, which can be connected to either your main CPU or in many cases now a dedicated safety manager CPU. This CPU can then dynamically decide when to run the different tests and also record and respond the results coming back. The diagram above shows both methods, but only one is actually required. For the CPU based approach, as I explained, mission mode has a simple CPU interface, which is simple to hook up to any CPU. However, for customers who do not have a CPU readily available through the test and safety ecosystem, we have tried to make this approach as simple as possible. Working with ARM through their functional safety partnership, we can help our customers integrate the ARM R52 automotive grade CPU as their safety manager, along with our mission mode controller, creating an effect, a dedicated safety island. This provides almost out of the box solution for creating a fully featured safety island function, a critical function as we target ASIL D for the level three plus ADAS type systems. So to conclude, let's go back to our full system example. Hopefully you can now see where the different technologies are coming from within the test and safety ecosystem to build up our complete design. Safety verification for all our functional and safety implementation, zero defect for manufacturing, monitor and manage for control and management. I hope this session helps you with your future automotive designs. And for more information on any of the technologies that I presented today, please check out mentor.com. One more final note, if you are interested in more information on the Ostemper functional safety technology, please visit the session presented by my colleague Anne Keffer 
titled Achieving a Single Iteration Thought Campaign for Automotive ICs. Finally, thank you again. I hope you're enjoying our semi-Israel virtual experience as much as I am. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>